Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. Today, I am interviewing my friend Maddie Haskins, and I think you are really going to laugh a little bit, but also take some great bullets of being a mom and being a working mom of young children out of this interview. So enjoy, Maddie. Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. My name is Heidi Bartolotta. I'm your host. In this podcast, you will hear real women, real stories, and real inspiration. If you enjoy it, please subscribe. Maddie, thank you for taking the time to do this with me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. So I would love it if you would start out with your story. And I want you to start back in college. So I want you to start with (laughs) athletics. Athletics. Okay. Um, And tell us how that, and then we'll move forward from there. Yeah. I mean, the whole story kind of just stems from college, I guess. Um, I went into college thinking that I wanted to get a business major because I had this idea of, you know, working in business. And then I decided math sucked. (laughs) (laughs) So I changed my major to exercise science, and I got my degree through Boise State in exercise science there, which I, oddly enough, don't use at all. Now, business major probably in hindsight would have been better, but um, that was that. So through college, that's what I studied. And then right after college, me and my boyfriend actually, on a whim, got this opportunity to move to Coeur d'Alene after we'd been dating for maybe five months or so. It's like... I remember coming home from coaching gymnastics, and he had a a glass of wine on the little, I don't know, the entry there, and he's, like, standing above the split level. He's like, hey, uh, I want to talk to you about something. Here's a glass of wine. I'm like, okay, what? What's going what on? What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, so he said that he op- had an opportunity to open up a CrossFit gym up in Coeur d'Alene, and at that time, I had graduated. He was just about to graduate, and I was coaching gymnastics at the time. I'm like, well, I don't really have much holding me here, so why not, you know? Let's give it a whirl. We'll see how it goes. So we went to Coeur d'Alene for a year, opened up a gym up there, and it was great and awful (laughs) all at the same time. Um, I was 23 years old. Eric and I were in a really new, fresh relationship. Then you piled on owning a business, working together, learning to know each other, all in a place where I knew no one was like a mess. You know, it was like a Mm -hmm. recipe for disaster. But it all worked out great because we learned a whole lot about what we didn't want to do. So that that was, yeah, an interesting thing. So when the lease was up on our house there, um, I told him that I was going to come back to the valley and I would encourage him to come with me if he wanted. <laughs> he did. So now we're married and have two kids, but that's kind of where it all started. So do you think, though, don't, and here's the thing that I love about people's stories is we talk about like these things like that starting a business that maybe if you had thought about it more, you might not have done. Yeah. But then it, don't you look back at it now and think, wow, I learned so much from yeah. that. And I'm sure that that has applied to the success in your business now, right? Because you yeah. learn things along the way, even though they might not be the greatest thing at yeah. the time. Totally. And, it, and that's exactly it. We learned, we individually learned a lot from that experience as well as together. That was never my project and never my thing. It was very much he and his business partner at the time. They had this thing, and I was like the girlfriend working for the thing. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have a lot of ownership in it anyway. So it was hard for me to feel motivated and connected to it. And so it just wasn't – it wasn't a good fit. Mm -hmm. So looking at that experience, I knew coming back, I'm like, I want to do my own thing. I want to be responsible for my own thing. So that's kind of how it pivoted from there. So while it was – a lot of things and a very colorful experience. I wouldn't change it by any means, yeah. but it very much helped shape what I wanted to do next and mm-hmm. just kind of how I wanted to view my professional life and myself in that effect. So fast forward, you wear a lot of hats right now because mm-hmm. aside from the fact that you are a mom and you run a business, mm-hmm. you also coach. Mm-hmm. So talk a little bit about how do you balance? Because this is the question, and I always joke about it because yeah. I know balance doesn't really exist, but we all kind of have this, <laughs> like, mystical thing in our head that totally. some woman out there has the perfect <laughs> balance in life. Yeah. How do you, how do, you do that? It's, it's very much a, a constant balancing. Like, some days are focused on 
real estate. Some days are focused on just my kids. Some days I'm only focusing on cheer coaching and those things. So understanding that there is an ebb and flow to all the things and realizing that once you give some so much here, you have to start kind of ping-ponging back and forth to make sure all the important things get handled. Mm-hmm. I think the self-awareness is a huge component to that. So I don't have an answer for how I do that. I just try to keep temperature on, okay, how is my marriage? How are my kids? Am I putting enough here to get the result that we want without really comp- like compromising on mm-hmm. the important things? So especially in real estate right now, this market is demanding a lot of people. It has buyers demanding endless hours. It has sellers demanding all these things. It's got other realtors demanding these things. And understanding your own boundaries and what I can give has helped kind of temper that and keep my emotions and my <laughs> my mental health in check, I guess. So just kind of having the 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 bumpers on each lane really helps to keep that balancing continuing. How do you think you figured that? You said a word that I love and I use all the time. I, boundaries are... <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're sometimes very difficult to set and hold, mm-hmm. but they are amazing if you put them in place, right? Yeah. How do you learn that? Uh, the hard way. <laughs> I, le- I learned a lot of things the hard way, but um, when you find yourself really strung out by giving so many things that really don't resonate with you and you just become to this point of totally exhausted mm-hmm. and that you just don't have any other option to say no, that moment you do say no and you get this kind of like, deep breath moment, you're like, okay, that worked. So maybe I should start saying no to a lot of these things that don't work and just let those go. That mm-hmm. was really freeing. And that's helped me just continue to do that as I've learned and had young kids and worked in, you know, with the fire service on the other side of it. So mm-hmm. it's been a huge blessing just learning that I can do that and that I, that I get to, I get to choose what those are. So. And it's empowering. I think mm-hmm. I love that word choose because Sometimes I feel like, especially as women, I don't know why women do this so much, but we give away so much (laughs) instead of making the choice and putting up those very strong lines, right? Mm -hmm. And most of the time when I see women struggling, it's because they're not choosing. They're letting someone else choose for them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's such a great. So let's talk about motherhood because you have... (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I saw the cutest <laughs> picture of your little one. Oh, they're so sweet. <laughs> gosh, they're – I'm super biased because they're mine, but they're so cute. I love my kids. <laughs> but you are in the thick of it. Yeah. 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 We live on snacks and blippy and <laughs> right now Spidey Man Kids is, like, running the life because my – you know, my baby doesn't have a choice, mm-hmm. so we're in the toddler shows. But, yeah, they're almost three and almost one. They'll both have their birthdays in June, and it's pure childhood chaos. Yeah. And it's great. We love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, you're running a really, really successful business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tips. What other tips would you give moms? So our podcast listeners, I don't know if I've given you this demographic, but it's a lot of women that are aspiring to six figures. Mm -hmm. And then we have kind of our counterparts that are at that place that I think just listen in to like be reassured. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah. I remember that. (laughs) Or, oh, I'm, I need to re-implement that in my life. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) So give us another tip. Um, I think the biggest tip for me is I default to like very little patience. And I like Mm. to kind of snap and fix really quickly. And so I've had to learn to like take a second and just own that it's just a season. My kids aren't going to be putting paint on the concrete every day. In a couple years, we won't have to deal with this problem, but I'm going to let them be little while they're little because I don't get the time back. And then, you know, just kind of just taking a breath and then like, okay, we're going to get through this (laughs) because it's not going to last forever. And I'm going to be grateful to have these messy moments now instead of just trying to push through and make everything tidy, because that's the way I like it. So Mm -hmm. um, I saw something interesting the other day where it was, it's not my turn, right? It's not my turn to have a perfect house, and it's not my turn to have all these things, but it is my turn to let my children experience childhood, and it is my turn to, you know, create this life for them that they're going to have these memories forever. So I thought that was a a fun way, and it really resonated with me in a way just to let them be little, and it's okay that it's not my way right now, because eventually they're going to be out of the house and it's just going to be mine to do that. So I'm like, okay, dang it. You're right. And I'm, I want them to have that great childhood. So it's okay to 
let that go for now. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a great one. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to put that as your quote. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my turn. It's my responsibility, but it's not my turn. <laughs> so book or podcast, do you have time for either right now? <laughs> I try. So podcasts are kind of intermittent just depending on if I get up early enough to listen to one while I get ready. Mm -hmm. Um, But the book thing is interesting too because I don't usually get to get through them very quickly. But previously before I got into working and, you know, developing myself as a human, I wasn't really a big reader at all. I'd see my husband reading and I'd be like, oh, that's cool, but no, you know. But he he got me this book on a whim. He's like, you've kind of mentioned that you're interested in finances and you want to learn about this. So he bought me Tony Robbins' Money Master the Game. Okay. Just like a thick, dense book, yeah, you know. Right. Being not a reader, I'm like, okay. But ironically, I opened it and I started reading. And what I liked about reading that book is that it kind of made me self-aware that I really actually liked learning and mm-hmm. that I could learn things and be a better version of myself. So while the content is money and finance, I'm like, well, I'm actually capable of reading this big book that's really dry. But man, I feel liberated knowing that I learned something awesome And so I've liked just that. That process. Yeah, the process of it, knowing that I'm capable of growing was like a huge revolution for me. I'm like, okay, I don't have to be this person forever. Um, So I, the book is great, but the self-awareness that I can change from reading was the the change in my behavior on that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's really cool. Yeah. So do you remember when you hit six figures? I asked women this and Mm -hmm. some people have a very emotional Like, they remember exactly the moment. Others, not as much. Mm -hmm. Do you remember it? I remember the year that it happened. It was my second year in real estate. Mm -hmm. Because when I got my license and I started working, we were very much in a place of, like, we got to (laughs) eat. So my first year was, how do I do this job? How do I get clients? And how do I, you know, start making some money? And I remember my first commission check being, like, $3,000. And I was so elated. I was like, cool. We can do some things. And then that just kind of was like, I can make this as big or as little as I want it to. And so the second year I set some goals just of how many houses I wanted to sell or how many people I wanted to help. So I ended up doing just a few more than that. And then I realized what that money was. I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that I was capable of that. I thought, you know, making six figures was kind of a, that's reserved for, you know, big, important people, Mm -hmm. not me just trying to learn and grow as I go. So that was just kind of an aha moment. Like, I can actually do Do this this. big if I want to do it big. So it's been really liberating too, again, just to see that that wasn't the goal, but the outcome of just the small actionable things like got me something that I didn't even think was attainable at the time. Mm -hmm. So I remember that year we got married. I had a great income. Things were just kind of like evolving and the blinders were coming off. I felt like we were just kind of like breaking the shell of (laughs) of what used to be. And so it was just more of a whole year experience than just the the money made that year. So it's really great. I think it's it's fun to hear women talk about that because everyone talks about it a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting and it's no one's is the same. Right. But I feel like as I've listened to your podcast and others, there's there's pieces that are consistent. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, okay, well, if even if I get sidetracked, if I can just come back to those pieces, I can get back on track to where I want to go along with having small kids and all the distractions. I'm like, okay, well, here's the pieces that I need. Just do the pieces and we'll get through the craziness. <laughs> and I would say, I want to say that one, I think, common theme through probably all of my podcasts, and you said this um, in talking about the books, is that I feel like every woman that I have interviewed mm-hmm. has a growth mindset. They don't have... It's like they look forward, they don't look back. And Mm -hmm. that's funny to me because I'm always asking them about their history, right? (laughs) So talk to me about this. Yeah. yeah. So what am I not asking? What what is something else that you would want to share that maybe someone could learn from? Um, I think a lot of, so you say a lot of your demographic is younger listeners maybe trying to come into this position is... Well, someone once told me when I was early on in real estate, and it's our manager and our sales manager at work, and he said, you can earn while you learn. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was just the greatest little, like, bump that I needed to give myself credibility of what I was learning to apply that to work. Like, I didn't have to know everything, and I didn't have to be perfect to get the ball rolling. And so I think anyone who's aspiring to do that and grow and be better, it's like, give yourself permission to learn as you earn and you know it's just makes it a continuum instead of there's no end result it's like it can grow as big as you want it to 
And you don't have to be perfect. I no. like that you said that because I do shouldn't. think <laughs> you shouldn't be perfect. <laughs> especially a lot of younger women will say, "How did you do it?" I'm like, I am still evolving. Like yeah. I'm still figuring stuff I out. Didn't know that I'm it's done. Not, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's and it's always going to change. And mm-hmm. you know, seasons change. You age. You learn. You do all the things. And you have experiences that teach you too. And I think just reflecting on experiences and taking the good and bad and how you want to, you know, navigate those is is huge. And the people that come into your life, right? Because mm-hmm. they do shift you sometimes or they have you look at something very differently. I have a really dear friend of mine who is very, very artistic and mm-hmm. um, but he's also a very successful business owner. And I love talking to him about business because he looks at it so differently. And I find that with a lot of the women that I get to surround myself with. And so I think that if you're, to your point, growing and open to it, mm-hmm. those those people come too, yeah. which is really fun. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of surprises you what doors open when you are open to the opportunity. Yeah. Instead of looking at everything as the way that it is like, okay, well, what, what could come from this? And just small conversations can bloom into things you would never expect. And so I think... Yeah. You know, just being open to things makes makes or breaks people sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so mm-hmm. true. Thank you for doing this with yeah. me. Thanks for having me. It's been really fun. Yeah. I know <laughs> it was something new to you. So hopefully yeah. you enjoyed it because yes, it was yeah. great. For sure. <laughs> it's always good to do something outside your comfort zone too. So yeah. If nothing else, like break a sweat and have a little fun. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you.